All right, so we're taking a break from the outside uh, projects to put something together that uh, I bought. I'm going to do this in the AC for a little bit. So from the box, you can see this is a um, Killer Instinct Model 1000. It's called a Lethal 405. And this is a crossbow. It's the first crossbow I've ever purchased. And so I thought I'd do a product review, a box opening, and we'll see exactly what all they have inside and how to put it together and all the instructions. So hope you enjoy the video. All right, so here's the uh, actual product. So you can see what we're looking at. It said it had a limited lifetime warranty. We'll see what that looks like. Um, I did not buy the crank, although I've heard from many people that that is a really good idea to have. So I might look into that at some other point. Um, but I got it from Bass Pro, very reasonably priced. I didn't want to spend too much money. Uh, read the reviews. Um, for the most part, it seemed pretty good. Probably like a four to a four and a half out of five. So as a result, um, I decided to try this one out and we'll see how it goes. So let's check it out. All right, so, all right, so the contents, we have our uh, owner's manual. We have, now return to store, quick start guide. And let's see how they packed it in there. So there's the actual um, bow portion of it. Uh, this we put in there. Um, here's the quiver. Here's the actual unit itself. And uh, I believe that's the hanger. And then there's three arrows that came with it. So we're going to unstrap all this and then uh, show you what we got. Alright, so uh, we're going to start with the assembly. Um, I quit, did a quick look over the instructions just to make sure I kind of had an idea. Um, when you put it together, the string is, you've got the double portion string goes in here and the single string goes up there. And when you do that, there's going to be a little pressure. You're going to have to slide this in this way. And then it's going to lock in. And then they give you two large bolts. We're going to place these bolts right in here. Give you a uh, Allen wrench. I'm gonna screw those in there. That turns probably faster with a uh, drill, but in the past I've done, I've assembled different items before in the past, and I used a power drill only to find out that I cracked something or broke something. So I would not suggest necessarily uh, using power tools. When assembling something like this, it would work and make it a lot faster. However, if you're not careful, you could over torque and break something. So and that's not what we're looking to do. So I'm going to start the next one before I finish tightening it. Make sure they're getting in there all right. We, um, main reason I bought this, well, <laughs> obviously it's going to be for hunting, but um, this year we were able to obtain two quota hunts for two different areas in our state of Florida that we're going to be able to hunt. And you can use crossbows, well, crossbow in one of them, and you can always use it on private land during archery. So... You never know. But we're going to be hunting this year, so we'll do some videos of our hunts. See if we can't show you anything we get um, this year. Alright, I'm going to switch it this way. 
I'm never fond of these bolts. I usually feel like they are made of the highest quality. So you got to be careful when you're tightening them up. It's not messing up. There's already built in a washer, a lock washer, and of course the bolt itself. So, and once you strip it, that's the end of that program. It ain't gonna work right. So you gotta be careful not to do that. All right, so that's those two bolts. Now we have to flip it over and there is a bolt that goes in right here. And this one, again, this is the third bolt. It's gonna hold this, um, basically the bow to the stock. This is what's being done here, so. There. Okay, so that's tightened up pretty good. So that's the assembly so far of the crossbow to the rail. All right, so now we're going to put the stirrup in. So that's going to slide in right here. And there are set screws in here that have to be backed out a little bit. So that can slide in there. Get this in there. Yeah, set screw there out. And you want to make sure that stirrup gets in there. If you notice, there's notches in there. So that's where that set screw can go down in there and hold it. So it's important that you make sure that that gets placed in there far enough so that um, it'll actually hold. And I think there were a few folks that were said that was a problem, but obviously also looking at this myself, you don't get it in there, right? It's not going to work. So it's uh, not a very difficult process. And you can actually tell, and as I'm screwing the uh, set screws in there, you can feel them going in there. And then they eventually stop when they hit the stirrup. So it uh, when they get in there all the way. So I'm going to go a little further. There we go. Uh, it's still a little loose compared to the other one. Oh, there it is. Okay, there. Now that's firm. And then what's gonna happen is you're gonna be putting your foot through there to hold this down while you're cocking it back. So, all right, now we're gonna look at installing the quiver. All right, so now we're going to put the quiver together. So they give you this little piece here. It's gonna get on there. Um, two screws are going to get put in there. It's just going to require a Phillips screwdriver. And we're just going to Again, I wouldn't uh, recommend using power tools because you can over torque something and then have more problems than you need. Okay, so I guess this isn't going all way. Definitely want to make sure everything is put together properly, tightly. All right, there we go. Now, um, the other piece for the quiver gets put on up here. And this is how you lock the quiver into this holster here. So we'll run these two. By the way, this is what the screw looks like, so a flathead um, screws they provide. Finish screwing this in there, and then I'll show you how the quiver sits on there. It has a little locking spot. It's um, made so it'll hold on there pretty good. So, all right. 
So those are on. Now when the quiver goes on, there's this little indentment here. And when you, let's see if it slides in there. I don't know which way it's supposed to slide in yet. I imagine it has to go this way. There we go. So it's gonna slide in and then this is gonna lock it in place. So it won't move. And your arrows will be sitting in here like this. All right. Ready? Okay. All right, so here's the scope they provide. Uh, we're gonna put that on there. So I've loosened up the nuts on there and these will move and adjust so we can get it to sit on here. So they tell you to kind of get it to where it'll be the best eye, re eye um, comfort. So I'm not 100% sure where exactly we're gonna put it. We're gonna put it on here and then we'll test it and see. So it literally just kind of sits onto that rail. There's grooves for the bolts to run across and sit in. And then when you tighten it up on this other rail, there's a, a lip and it'll just kind of sit on there. And then it has covers, obviously, for that as well. So that can be done. So there, we've already got the uh, crossbow assembled. We have our um, scope on. We've got this on here for the rail. And now we're going to take a look to see what the next step is they have us to do. All right, before we go fire it, I um, also bought a um, target. I'm literally just opening it for the first time, so we're going to see what we got. So this is a a target for a crossbow. Um, it is small, but if you're a good aim, then you're going to know what you're shooting into. So we're going to get our crossbow loaded, and we're going to go shoot it and see how it works. All right, so... Here's the crossbow. Um, one thing I want to talk about real quick is the safety zone of this. Your safe zone to touch is from here to here, to these stoppers. If you are touching and your hand is forward before those, and this string releases, it could very much injure yourself. So they, they tell you, make sure your hand, if you're touching anything, it's in this portion here, to where you're not going to be injured. So now we're going to load an arrow, and I am making sure that nobody is in my vicinity, in front of me that is. Uh, you're going to put that green part down. I'm assuming. That that is loaded. Um, up against it. I was trying to take the safety off before. Here we go. So once that, that arrow is in there, it actually allows you to, to release it. I, I, I'm assuming they don't want you dry firing the uh, this uh, crossbow. So we're going to see, uh, like this hasn't been sighted in or anything. Uh, this is all from the factory. So we've got a target back there. And we're just going to see how well this works. Let's Can check it out. It? All right, so we found it. It was way short of the uh, target. So we're going to reload it again and try it, and I'm going to try and be a little more steady and see if uh, the scope's off or what. All right, so one thing they do tell you to do is a grease. They give you, again, it looks like chapstick. They want you to grease the rail, and they want you to grease the... Um, the uh, string. They say every five shots. So because these are my first shots and loading and so forth, I'm going to probably grease a little bit more than perhaps normally would. But I don't want to take any chances and mess up a brand new bow. So um, we're going to do that. We're going to load it and then try firing it again. So we'll see y'all are checking this out with us during the first time. All right, so when you reload it, this comes with a rope for um, um, cocking the uh, string back. 
I got it backwards though. You have to go it through a certain way. Um, so that's important to remember that these grooves come down this way. You can attach it here and here. There's also a spot on here. The rope is supposed to ride in there. So you want to make sure that is done as well. So it definitely takes a little more muscle to do this than it would if you just were doing the crank. But you're going to hold it. And when you get the pulling, there's a tight spot right there. Right here. And it releases. And then you got to wait for that click. When you hear that click, the string is now cocked and ready to go. So you can take this off. You want to make remember again, you want to do it carefully because you don't want that string to break loose, come loose on you, and then hurt you. So uh, we're going to fire again. So I'm going to load my arrow. Again, the green fin, probably using all the wrong terminology, but it goes in here. Okay. Like that should then allow you to get the safety off which it does and I love the fact that as soon as the string cocks the safety's on so it's it's great that you know that's there so it should prevent any um, misfires but you definitely don't want anybody sitting on the other side I believe this is four over 400 foot pounds of uh, foot feet per second here with this uh, arrow so Let's see if we can actually hit the target this time. Okay. All right, so we've made a couple adjustments on the scope, uh, and I think we've got it. We hit the target low last time. I did a couple more clicks, so we should be able to hit that target in the center. So let's see how we do this time. So we've done a lot of adjustments on it now. I think we're going to be pretty close with this. Uh, it's pretty much hitting dead on. But we are only sighting it in at probably, I don't know, 15 yards. So that's probably not the best. But let's uh, see if we got any better this time. All right, so that is the Killer Instinct... Um, crossbow uh, i like it it's definitely a little bit of a challenge to cock but um i'm uh i'm about 510 i weigh about 173 and uh pounds and i was able to cock it okay so um but you've got to have some strength to be able to pull that back because it's quite a Quite a challenge. I did want to just notice this. Uh, that was the fifth shot, and you're supposed to grease it after every five shots. What I do want to mention is greasing it prior to here isn't going to do much. So you want to grease on this cable here, on this side, um, probably in here as well as it's sliding across here. So you want to grease in here, and then under here, and on this string over here. Because those are the ones that are going to go through the cambers. So um, you definitely want to make sure it's greased up right so that it's uh, going smooth and uh, that you can fire it. But uh, hopefully this year we'll be able to use this and get ourselves a deer. So anyways, uh, appreciate you watching. I hope this was of some benefit to you. The scope is still going to need a little work to get it on there. But I was at least able to hit the target on the lower end of it. Um, it's been a while since I've shot anything. So um I'll probably spend a little extra time getting that scope uh, dialed in and uh, should be uh, an exciting time hunting with it. So I appreciate you all watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. You can subscribe. Like I usually say, I like to uh, review things and if I buy something or do something, show you what we're doing. So I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.